everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for our final daily dose of Times Power Remastered spoilers. So, we just got the full set. The good news is, there's still some really good cards that we haven't talked about, but I also want to let you know, if you want to see the full set, you can head over to mtgpreviews.com, got the whole set, it's sortable, filterable, all that good stuff, figure out if you want to buy a box, what cards you're looking for, what reprints you're most excited about, and another reminder, if you need to pre-order some Times Power Remastered, you can do that right now from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com. So anyway, let's break down the rest of the set. The last cards from Times Power Remastered, and starting with the old set, we got a few more good reprints, multicolor color lists, uh, starting with Kravik the Merciless. So Kravik, it's a card that is actually kind of expensive. It's like a $10 rare currently, probably going to come down quite a bit. This is kind of a weird card. It was a card that, in the old days of Commander, was actually pretty popular when Commander first started, but in the years since, we've gotten a lot of good Rakdos Commanders. And now Kravik ranks pretty far down on the list of the most popular Rakdos commanders. However, it does see play in the 99 of damage-based decks, essentially. Uh, things like Vile Smasher, you're getting extra damage out of Kravik, which is nice. Abash, Yurlock. So if you're kind of like a Rakdos or Rakdos plus burn style deck, then Kravik is kind of an interesting finisher, just punishing your opponent with a ton of damage for casting spells. So even though Kravik isn't the commander it used to be as far as popularity, it's still a sweet card, it's still a relatively expensive card, and definitely a solid reprint in Time Spiral Remastered. We also got a card that we just always need more copies of, which is Urborg Tube of Yagmoth. Urborg, it's been reprinted a few times, and it's still like a $30 card or something. It has so much demand because it's a staple in Commander, and it sees play in formats like Legacy and Modern as well. So Urborg, its main job is turning all your lands into swamps so you can combo with Cabal Coffers in Commander. Like, that is something that most mono black decks are going to be doing. You might wonder, like, why is my mono black deck going to play Urborg? Don't I have a lot of swamps anyway? That's kind of true, but uh, Urborg lets you play utility lands that are not swamps and still have them add mana for Cabal Coffers. It makes Cabal Coffers a swamp, so it's adding mana for itself. So that's kind of the main home for Urborg in Commander. Also, in older formats, like Legacy, shows up in, like, Dark Depths combo, where you can play your Dark Depths on turn one, turn two, Urborg, now your Dark Depths is a swamp, you got two mana Vampire Hex Mage, maybe with an old border, to remove the counters, make a 20-20. It also shows up in just some, like, Mutavault style decks. We see decks kind of across formats, modern decks in Pioneer, that are playing Mutavault, but they want to make sure that they can still cast their spells. Playing an Urborg is a low opportunity cost way to make your Mutavaults tap for black mana, so you reduce the risk of like drawing all colorless lands, not casting your stuff. So you add all that together, and that makes Urborg a really playable, really expensive card. Hopefully the price will come down a bit. It is a rare, which is good news, so hopefully the price comes down a bit, but this is one of those cards that when we're looking back a year or two from now, it's probably going to be right back to where it was before it was reprinted, because everyone needs copies of Urborg from Commander all the way back to Legacy. We also got a couple of not quite as good as Urborg land reprints. Swarm Yard, it's a card that doesn't see that much play, but it hasn't been reprinted very much. It was in a secret layer, I believe. So it's like $12, I want to say, maybe $15. Care Keep, eh, not super expensive. Only a couple of dollars, but both of these cards see fringe Commander play. Swarm Yard mostly shows up in Changeling theme decks, like Orvar, Swarm Yard, Technically, Orvar is a insect, or a rat, or a spider, or a squirrel, so you can regenerate it just by tapping it, which is nice. Also shows up in, like, Tribal Tribal, usually headlined by the Erdragon, and now, thanks to Toski, we actually have actual squirrels to protect as well. So Swarm Yard, it's not a card that's going to see play in, like, 98% of Commander decks, but in that 2%, it's actually a pretty powerful utility lad. As far as Care Keep, mostly shows up in token-style Commander decks, Perforos, Zada, Prashi is some added flavor, because you're making bolts of care keep so it's right on point with prosh but it's been reprinted a few times so only a couple of dollars but still in certain commander decks eh, a nice way to add a little bit of extra value to your mana base so swarm yard care keep not urborgs not super duper ultra expensive reprints but still gonna be get the cost down on these cards make it more accessible so solid lands in type style remastered we also got eh, a couple of bulk rares hivestone if 
Not much to say about these. If you want to build slivers plus another tribe, Hivestone can maybe do some janky fun stuff if I don't think I've ever seen anyone play in any format. So pretty much just bulk rares rounding out the set. We also got the return of Safi Eric's daughter, which is notable for one big reason, and that is this version of Safi with new art seems intentionally themed with Hans Eriksson, which we got a few months ago in Commander Legends, even made by the same artist. So I'm assuming that was the plan to have this Hans character come up in its first card ever and then have a new Safi to go with it. So I like the flavor of this card, although Safi doesn't really see a whole lot of play anywhere and is a pretty inexpensive card, but I do love how the art ties together with Hans. So sweet flavor reprint, even though Safi isn't an especially valuable card at this point. Speaking of not especially valuable card at this point, we got Coalition Relic, which is a card that just kind of makes me sad. This is one of those cards that shows how much Commander has changed, and how much more powerful many of the new cards we get for Commander are. So Coalition Relic, if you jumped in a time machine to like 10 years ago, this is a mana rock that would be in essentially all of your Commander decks. It was one of the best mana rocks you could play, but since then, we've gotten Commander Spheres and Arcane Signets and the rest of the Talisman. There's so many good mana rocks now that Coalition Relic finds itself seeing play less and less. Even though it's technically a three mana mana rock that can add two mana, even though it takes two turns to get the two mana, or you can do it every other turn rather, uh, but it's just not as exciting as it used to be. So it's still a fine card. It's still a playable card. And I do like Coalition Relic. There's just so much competition now that it's kind of just like a $5 mid-tier mana rock rather than being an expensive chase mana rock that is one of the best in the commander format. Also want to mention really quick an uncommon in Rebuff the Wicked for one big reason, which is we thought that Time Tower Remastered was being spoiled color by color, and that we were getting all the cards from the colors that day. So we were working under the impression that Rebuff the Wicked was missing from the set, and we were a little disappointed because it's like a $5 uncommon. However, and there was a spoiler dump at the end of Time Tower Remastered that you can see at mdtpreviews.com, uh, and we got Rebuff the Wicked. So good job on Wizards not missing out on one of the most valuable uncommons to reprint from the entire set. As far as old border cards, we still got some good ones. We got the Return of Solid Simulacrum with its original sad robot invitational art and the old border and Solemn. It's been a long time since Solemn came around and it's still a card that sees a lot of play. Like it's a staple of Commander where it ranks as one of the most played colorless cards in the format alongside the Soul Rigs and Arcade Signets and Swiftfoot Boots of the World and it even sees a little bit of play in Standard and Historic where like colorless ramp decks with Forsaken Monument or some like Mono Black Ugin decks use it. So this is another one of the old border cards that actually is relevant to arena only formats like standard and historic so hopefully we get a card style at least on there so definitely excited to see the best solemn art returning with the best border returning this is the version of solemn i'm gonna play my commander deck so i'm hyped about that we also got a couple of i would say mid-tier legendary commanders so grenzo dungeon warden slime for the Stowaway are actually relatively popular commanders for their colors if you look at Rakdos, Grenzo is number four behind Ange, behind Rakdos, behind Chainer. Then you get to Grenzo making a sweet goblin deck with this bottom of your library sub theme. So a relatively popular, although not expensive commander. And then Slimefoot, even less expensive. It's a relatively recent uncommon. So original version's not that much, but I was actually surprised to find that Slimefoot is the number four Golgari commander. It goes Marin, Gitrog, Monster, Hippotra, and then Slimefoot doing its sacrifice separately theme stuff so not super expensive cards but look at sharp in the old border and very relevant to commander we also got some more interesting old border lands ramen up ruins bajuka bog arch of araska in mystic sanctuary so these are all cards that are at least somewhat playable in some format if you look at let's say ramen up ruins ramen up ruins is a staple of like mono red burn style decks in pioneer and historic essentially if you're playing burn in a format that doesn't have access access to Lightning Bolt, then you're probably playing Ramen on Bruids to push in a little bit more damage and close out the game. So I don't think this one will be super expensive just because I'm not sure how much like Pioneer players care about Old Borders, and we don't even know if the Old Borders are going to show up on Arena, but I mean, it still does look really nice in the Old Border. As far as Bajuka Bog, this is a card that shows up all over the place. It shows up in formats like Modern and Legacy, where you play it as a one-of tutor target for like Crop Rotation or Knight of the Reliquary 
sanctuary so you don't get wrecked by dredge you're like pre-sideboarded a little bit for the graveyard combo matchups also it's a staple of black decks in commander to the point where it actually should be played more in commander i think like if you're playing a mono black deck i think your deck should just always make room for bajuka bog like having a little bit of graveyard hate is gonna save your day in some meta games in some matchups at some commander tables and this is a really low opportunity cost way to sneak it into your deck so if you're playing turgrid or even multicolor decks bedrotha marin you probably should be playing bajuka bog more than you are now like i think you should just be in every deck that's mono black and even most mono color decks it is that good and it looks nice in the old border as far as mystic sanctuary this was a little bit weird just because it recently got banned in modern it was not that long ago that mystic sanctuary was one of the best things going in modern cryptic command locking you can like bounce the mystic sanctuary then get back the cryptic and it's the most frustrating annoying play pattern uh, that has been around in modern in a minute so it's banned in modern but it still does see play in commander to some extent with orvar or with talran kind of spell slinger style decks and it sees a little bit of play in older formats if you go back to like legacy putting miracle cards like terminus on the top of your deck is good even back to vintage some like xerox decks in vintage play it so even though it's banned in modern mystic sanctuary still sees play in enough formats where it's a sweet old border reprint as far as arch of araska probably the least played of the bunch but it does show up a little bit in commander either in colorless decks where you just got to play all the good colorless lands because you don't have a ton of options or sometimes in like mono white decks because white struggles with drawing cards but really out of the four lands we've been talking about arch of araska probably ranks at the bottom of the heap in terms of playability so some sweet lands that look really sharp and do have ramifications i think bajuka bog most exciting because that's a commander stable mystic sanctuary also exciting ramen up ruins it's good but it doesn't see play in old border formats that much and then arch of araska meh whatever even though it does at least still look nice with the old border we also got brown border vanquishers banner and vanquishers banner it's a commander staple it is a tribal all-star so if you are playing essentially any tribal deck you are going to at least consider vanquishers banner it doesn't matter if you're playing zuberi griffins or you're playing eladrami elves or you're playing marrow dollar rats or you're playing rick humans <laughs> it doesn't matter vanquishers banner is going to be great draw you cards pumping your team one of the better tribal cards in the format which probably means it's going to be a pretty expensive old border card even its normal versions are fairly expensive just because it has so much commander demand doesn't see any play in 60 card formats so vanquishers banner being a commander all-star i think is enough to make this a pretty expensive old border card even the original ixalan version not even that old is like a 15 dollar rare at this point even though it sees zero play in 60 card formats just because it's that good in commander we also got three lower rarity quote unquote commander cards and while these cards might not look like much they're actually some of the most popular cards in their colors in commander rakdos charm i think is the third most played rakdos card dovin's veto number one azorius card mortify number one orzov card so these are cards that people are going to want for their commander decks and dovin's veto gets beyond that a little bit too showing up in like modern control decks legacy control decks and stone blade decks so even though you might see these and be like eh, aren't these random like commons and uncommons that's kind of true but they're also really in demand and the old border looking spectacular is probably going to mean they maintain at least a reasonable amount of value we also got a couple of modern focus cards i would say tide Allo scholar in hollow one coming in old border so tide Allo scholar doesn't see a ton of play but it does show up on occasion in ether vile decks primarily death and taxes some stone blade style decks wasteland strangler aldrazi and taxes it's also a zombie so if you're playing like vile zombies it's essentially like a thought sees on a stick as long as you keep it on the battlefield so it is a good card it is a playable card the only downside is none of the typical homes for tide hollow sculler are super popular in any format at the moment but that doesn't mean they won't be in the future like it's good enough that it can see play in formats like modern and even legacy as far as hollowwood hollowwood used to be the hotness in modern but then they banned faithless looting so hollow one essentially died in modern which means right now its main home is actually vintage where it 
kind of combos with Bizarre Baghdad, because Bizarre Baghdad, you draw a two, discard three, three makes your Hollow Woods free, so it shows up in actually a bunch of different vintage decks, from like straight up Dredge, to Hog Egg style decks, to some Survival of the Fittest style decks, which means this one is basically a gift to vintage players, although I think there's a chance that if the right card comes along, Hollow One could have another day in the sun in Modern 2. Rounding out our Old Border cards, we have a few of what I would consider lower tier Old Border cards. Epic Experiment, it's a really cool card. It's actually, I would say, one of the coolest cards that just doesn't really see any play. If you make a lot of mana in a Spellslinger deck, it can be powerful, but it just doesn't actually see play anywhere. Trigot Predator is one of those cards that used to be pretty heavily played, but as time has gone by and we've gotten more cards printed, it's kind of fizzled and faded away in all the formats it used to be good in. So Epic Experiment, I shouldn't say it's never played. It does see the tiniest bit of play in some Spellslinger Commander decks, but even in like Melek or Mizzix, decks that you would consider Epic Experiment to be perfect for, it's not really a staple of those decks. And then, as far as Trigod Predator, it's kind of the same scenario with Quasali Pride Mate. When we talked about yesterday, Quasali Pride Mate used to be a really good card in modern, but then Night of Autumn came along, Trigot Predator is kind of similar. Like, Trigot Predator used to be pretty good all the way back to Vintage or in Commander decks, but then we've gotten more and more cards, and if you're playing Vintage, like, why would you play a Trigon Predator when you could just Oko Thief of Crowds and play the most broken Planeswalker in the history of the game for the same exact mana cost? So even though Trigon Predator used to be really sweet and fairly heavily played, it's just kind of fallen victim to power creep and more cards entering formats. So not that either of these cards are bad. They're just pretty limited in their uses now and maybe have been somewhat invalidated by power creep in recent years. We also got Secret Plans, which I think is my pick for the single worst Old Border card in the entire set. Uh, Secret Plans... It's kind of like a pseudo payoff for morph decks, although it doesn't even really see play in like Animar in Commander. It sees play in Kadena. That's the one deck that it's actually like a staple, quote unquote. But really, it only can see play in morph style decks. And it doesn't even see play in all the morph style decks. And it's a random like bulk uncommon. So I think Secret Plans is the card that you want to open least in your old border slot. I'm dreading cracking my Time Star Remastered box and getting a foil secret plans is my one foil old border card in the entire box. So uh, hopefully you can dodge it. I mean, if you're playing Kadena, then maybe you want some copies. But outside of that, there just isn't many uses for secret plans. We also got Sorcerer's Spyglass coming in the old border. And I actually like this one for a couple reasons. Of course, it's been reprinted a bunch. It's not an expensive card, but it sees play in older formats, specifically in Chalice of the Void decks. If you're not playing Chalice of the Void in older format, then you play Pithing Needle because it's cheaper, but if you're playing Chalice of the Void, your goal is to put Chalice on one, you'd counter your own Pithing Needle, so in like prison style decks in older formats, Sorcerer's Spyglass is actually just better Pithing Needle. The other reason I like it is this is one of the old border cards that is almost always legal and standard. At least for the past few years, Wizards has always kept it in the format as a safety valve, and I really like old border cards that are standard relevant because you can pull this out and play it in this on your standard tables. Hopefully this one comes to Arena as well, because it looks really sweet with the old border. Finally, we got Manifold Key, uh, which is essentially the new Voltaic Key, a mostly upgraded Voltaic Key. I think you could even argue it's like strictly better for the most part. Uh, and it looks really sharp in the old border. Now you can play both Voltaic Key and Manifold Key at old border. As far as seeing play, it's mostly a vintage card where you use it to untap Time Vault and take infinite turns. Although it does show up a little bit in colorless commander decks, like untap tapping your Tractos, or just untapping Mana Rocks that tap for a whole bunch of mana, it turns it into like another ramp spell that can also make your stuff unblockable. So definitely not a high-end card, but it does have its uses, so I wouldn't consider it a complete nut in the old border slot. Otherwise, I mean... There's just a ton of random comments and uncommons that got dumped today. So if you want to see them all, again, head over to mtdpreviews.com. You can sort them, you can filter them, you can dig through them and find your favorite of the bunch. Anyway, that brings us to the end of our daily Time Spiral Remastered spoilers, not just for today, but for our spoiler season. So now that we got the full set, what do you think? Are you buying a box? Are you buying singles? What old border card are you most excited to pick up? What format are you going to play it in? What about the reprints? Are you grabbing the expensive stuff like Damnations, Sliver Legions that are now hopefully going to be cheaper as a result? Uh, let me know what you think about the set as a whole in the comments. Are you going to draft it? Let me know about that too, because Time Spiral Draft is super sweet, and I'm hoping this is as well 
well, uh, you gotta play it on Moto, I guess, because we don't really have paper events right now. But still, are you excited to draft the format? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and thanks for hanging out this spoiler season. Uh, so once again, check out the full set at ftgpreviews.com. If you need some cards, you get them from Card Kingdom. They're pretty awesome, and they got Time Spiral Remastered up for pre-order. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Have an amazing day. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.